Okay, guys, uh, we're starting the 430 session, the panel, and uh, you might find it worthwhile to move down a little bit as we're just passing a microphone back and forth amongst the uh, speakers. Uh, most of the people up at the front are speakers, but there are uh, some people from our organizer group, and uh, this is intended to be just a, essentially a question and answer period for things that may have come up during the day that you want to follow up on or you didn't think to ask earlier, um, as well as questions that weren't addressed by speakers that you think you'd like to know an answer to. And then uh, uh, people will respond uh, as they see uh, fit in the group that we have here. Um, the one thing that I thought worth addressing uh, as a sort of a startup question is essentially the question of adoption strategy, or rather how are you as an individual or as a person looking after client sites or working within an enterprise, um, how are you going to deal from the point of view of how is Gutenberg introduced to the people you work with or, or that you work for? That uh, presumably you're not simply going to have a 5.0 land on your site and then instantly people will start to use it. It doesn't actually in practice work very well that way. So um, I open the floor just to start off with in terms of how um, our speakers think that you should go about deciding how to address Gutenberg, jump in, wait a period, uh, have a process of gradual introduction, uh, uh, training, and so on. So, do you, do you want to do intros first? Just if you want to do a 10 second intro, that's a good idea. Welcome to the glorious USB-C future, everyone. It's not learning your local bylaws. You're learning an in international set of rules. The differences in the country are um, one. But they're still tough. And how uh, on how website planning can really work for you, and uh, how to get really started on on your strategy and understanding your users. Um, please feel free to um, to let me know, and I'd love to help you out. Hello, uh, my name is Anthony Bruchel. Uh I work at WP Engine, and I have uh, the privilege of working on open source for a living, um, for the majority of my time. Uh, and I was recently the release lead for 5.0 representing media 
Well, so if you have questions about media in 5.0, I'm definitely the person to ask. <laughs> So the question was, how safely do you deploy 5.0? Um, I'm going to quote or tell you what WordPress BIP are doing. The first thing they've done is put the classic editor control on and turned off Gutenberg by default. That is not bad advice. Um, but then you can turn it on selectively for post types as you do, as, as you need to, and as you're comfortable, and as you've got, you've tested and made sure it works right. So, advice, I think if anyone wants to counter that, yeah, turn, just add. Just add. <laughs> get the... Uh, just one thing, uh, in a lot of the early uh, uh, presentations on, uh, on the classic editor, they showed uh, examples uh, from the Gutenberg people, in which you had a choice. You could either use uh, Gutenberg or uh, uh, or the classic editor. It was just a pull down. And uh, uh, yours truly, uh, Elementor and Divi, rushed in and added their little uh, things to that. That has disappeared. Uh, you no longer have that choice, even though you may be running both uh, uh, WordPress 5.0 and classic editor. I would like to have both as a choice. I'd like to be able to pull down and decide at that point, when I'm creating that new uh, file, uh, sorry, new uh, post or page, I would like to be able to decide at that point from the pull down whether I want to use the classic editor or the Gutenberg editor. Yeah. I'll be down here. So I'll move my back past. There's a plugin called Ramp. Uh, look that one up. That's the one you want to get in there because that's the one built by automatic VIP to control the, uh, the install control. So, yeah, so uh, in, in my, so uh, it, being that I, I work at, at WP Engine, we have many, many customers and, and we've had many different unique scenarios. And uh, uh, I've been tasked with generating a a rollout plan for Gutenberg. And currently we don't have anything publicly to say as far as what we are going to absolutely do, but at the same time, WordPress is not out yet. It's not bundled in yet, or it's bundled in our release candidate, but it's not the final version, so we don't know exactly what it looks like yet. So what we've been trying to do is anticipate what is going to happen later on. Uh, and what we found is there's three scenarios that, that users will find themselves uh, after they have to perform an action to upgrade to 5.0. So one thing I want to say is, Please update to 5.0. Do not stay on 4.9.8. There's no reason to stay on 4.9.8 uh, with the classic editor in existence. So we found three scenarios that, that they would end up in. One is either they need to shut off Gutenberg and, and uh, uh, turn on the classic editor. The other scenario is that Gutenberg works. So they can turn it on, and it does work. It doesn't break their site. And the third scenario is that maybe they have some plugin functionality that's keeping Gutenberg from working. And let's just pretend in this fantasy world that it's a WooCommerce extension that's not working, right? Uh, the product post type is, uh, is available, uh, and you can granularly control where Gutenberg is used, as we mentioned earlier with Gutenberg Ramp plugin. So there's the hybrid approach, there's the all in to Gutenberg, and the don't use Gutenberg uh, scenario. Those are the only three rollout plans that I think are, are available. That either you don't adopt, you adopt, or you do a hybrid approach. So just keep that in mind. I guess. And that's what I'm saying. Put, put RAMP plug in, and then you get. Yeah, and, and RAMP also has uh, some hidden features in it where you can do, like, uh, uh, you can actually, with code, define where it's being used. Uh, so it doesn't have to be just post type. You can maybe do categories and things like that. So there's 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 all kinds of ways that are available, and they, they built it in such a way that you can hook into it. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that this would happen, but I, I wish that Gutenberg Ramp and Classic Editor were merged, because having those two options, or having those options is important. Um, but yeah. This in the, when you declare a post type and function, do they add a new code to deploy Gutenberg or not? Uh, so, so when you when you view the edit screen in Gutenberg Ramp, what it does is a query of all the available post types and gives you a list with oh, checkboxes. When you're when you're declaring a post type, can you there have a hook for Gutenberg? You could have a filter. You could add a filter to do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a filter, but not a declare. But not about the uh, that's your post type. Yeah. I, I don't want to hold the mic forever. It's out of the view. Is that like? Yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, question from the floor. 
Anybody? Anything burning? Back, way back. Uh, I have a question. Uh, sure. Hey, my voice. I started blog after what you do on the 14th on WordPress camp. And I, I like the simplicity of both the old editor and, quote, the new editor, which has nothing to do with Gutenberg, by the way. And uh, I'm getting slightly apprehensive right now because from what I'm hearing, comments this afternoon so far as today is that. Um, Gutenberg will supplant, if not replace, all the old editors that WordPress we use. And can you please elucidate or clarify that? I don't know that. Please. So, uh, so basically, this this tiny MCE. That's the current editor. That's in WordPress today. It's tiny MCE, which, by the way, is not a WordPress exclusive. It's an open source project. that's in lots of uh, projects out there. Joomla is one of them. Um, Gutenberg is the new editor in WordPress 5.0, but there's other third-party plugin editors that still exist on the repo. So there's lots of choices. If you want to stick with TinyMCE, you can use something like Gutenberg Wrap or, Cla Ramp or Classic Press to still get TinyMCE. Um, Tiny, you know. Yeah, So that is still available to you in, in Gutenberg in WordPress 5.0. So if you want to insert a thing like, a, let's say, a, a gallery, and you want to respect those filters that come into the gallery, like the post gallery filter, or let's say you want to create a playlist, you can create a classic block, click on the add media button, and continue with the flow as you've expected over the years. So in effect, your, your block becomes the whole content area. The block is just the content, yeah. Right. Just to reiterate on what you were saying, is that it's the future and this is what is great for WordPress and everything. And I agree. And I have an interesting perspective because I was really involved in the Joomla project when we had a backwards compatibility break and we had something called a legacy plugin. The legacy plugin allowed you to, to run legacy plugins and extensions. You know who used the legacy plugin? The hipster people that were with Joomla before the legacy before the new version came out. You know who never used the legacy plugin? The new users. Because why? Why would they use a, the, uh, a template or a theme or a plugin that required some legacy stuff? And those companies that didn't upgrade, they were kind of in the uh, back in the wayside. And I mean, I work for a plugin company. We're very aware, and whatever helps WordPress get more adoption rate, we're a fan of. So, but I agree. Start with Gutenberg Ramp or the classic plugin. You don't have to be Gutenberg turned on 100% day one. You can be cautious, but do take the time to learn. 
Uh, the next question. Thank you. Uh, end user, just to follow up on the end user, I don't know how to download or install WordPress. What can I do to learn and start tinkering with Gutenberg before I make a buy? There is a plugin in the repository called Gutenberg. Thank you. Uh, well, and, and that will that will get him. And that's not quite what he's asking. So how do you uh, before I go live? Yeah. How do I tinker with it so I don't touch anything on my live site? I just want to learn yeah. to tinker and get create, it. create a staging site and you're a host and you've got a good host. Or there's the Who's here services now, right? Yeah. Or plugins. Uh, right. If it's not a private uh, the other thing is one guy. Mentioned about the demo sites. So with somebody like WP Engine, um, with one click you can create what's called a staging website. What a staging website is is a copy of your website that you can tinker with that won't affect the live website. And that's where you could essentially install Gutenberg and play with it without affecting your live site. What you'll have to do is speak to whoever your hosting provider is and see if a staging site is possible. Otherwise, if, if he could just copy it to another domain, if you do that, just make sure that it is not indexable by Google. Otherwise, you'll run into lots of SEO issues. Uh, you can go to test, Google, yeah. or .com. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can only get. I thought he wanted to test You won't be able to publish stuff, I think. You won't be able to have the full experience. Full but full yeah, full experience itself. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Uh, Anthony pointed out in his lecture that uh, today that uh, there is WordPress Release Candidate 2 available. Now, WordPress Release Candidate 1 has been out for about a week. Uh, is, is it on the same site that Anthony? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that site is? Uh, Make.wordpress.org. Make.wordpress.org. Uh, yeah, Mike. Got it. There's also, for the hosts that don't offer staging facilities, I think um, <laughs> Boom, that has a table out there, they don't have staging sites, but you can have unlimited um, uh, subdomains, so you can just create a site on a subdomain and then throw it out when you're done. So there's three or four different ways to get into Gutenberg, from the demo sites, which just give you an edit session that's ditched as soon as you're finished, but you can't break anything, all the way to a copy of your existing site that you can do with it, do with it what you will, and then delete it. Yes, question? No, I just want to point out that if you just go to uh, wordpress.org slash Gutenberg, yeah, that's a demo site. It's actually a Gutenberg editor. Right, that's what we're calling the demo sites. So yeah. you, can, you can play around with Gutenberg, I want right. to go to that site and play around with Gutenberg. I think, I recall that there are like three different sites that offer the editing sort of experience as a service, and then it's uh, deleted as soon as your session's over. Yes? In reference to uh, Elementor, and um, I guess how Gutenberg and Elementor are going to be uh, meshing in the future, any thoughts on that? Who would like to pick that one up, Jack? Yep. Uh, I've been doing a series of tests of all the uh, uh, major page builders, the, the big five, I call them. That's Divi, uh, 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 Visual Composer, uh, Thrive, Theme, uh, Themeify, and Elementor. And uh, all of them have promised to be uh, compatible with Gutenberg so that you can run inside Gutenberg uh, their uh, uh, areas. They're literally sections uh, straight out of Elementor or Divi if you're familiar with that. Uh, the problem is is that I have not been able to successfully run, uh, in, in the case of Elementor, anything other than a first append of Elementor. After that, you can't uh, you know, add some more uh, 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 Gutenberg code and then add some more uh, 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 Elementor underneath that. However, two of the um, page builders do allow that. One is Themeify and the other is uh, Visual Composer. 
Both of those allow you to get in and so forth. Uh, Dibby has promised that, and uh, I can get uh, uh, some of the stuff to work, but not all of the stuff. And, you know, it just it starts to glitch out. So that's the current status of the page builders within uh, uh, WordPress. However, and, and Gutenberg. However, the interesting thing is, is that Release Candidate 2 has come out and uh, Gutenberg 4.5, and I have found that things that didn't work in my testing just a week ago now do work. So I'll be really interested in trying Release Candidate 2 on these uh, uh, page builders and see how they work at that point in time. We fixed everything. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add something? Sorry, just, just going back, uh, just to be clear, um, on one of the, the, um, the last question. Uh, just in case anybody here wants to test Gutenberg on a subdomain, just make sure that your um, WordPress installation is set to no index. Yes. Because you're doubling up on your whole website, and that could cause problems for you with uh, Google and SEO. Best is password protected. Oh, yeah, even better. Great advice. Password protected, and then Google won't get in at all. Uh, back to the Elementor question. Uh, there is one plugin for Elementor called uh, Elementor Blogs yes. for Gutenberg. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it works beautifully. Uh, you can create kind of uh, sections in Elementor and use them with Gutenberg. Like, it's, it's a best of both worlds kind of thing. Uh, it's very interesting. It works in the free version. It's very easy to use. Mike, did you have something? Uh, yeah, and I don't want to. I'm not going to add too much, but Bolton uh, uh, also has a builder, and I'm not going to get into statistics or whatever compared to that. But um, we have, we power uh, hundreds of thousands of websites, um, and my thing is we've had blocks before that were cool, so we have AI generated blocks, hundreds of thousands of them. Uh, and we are pro Gutenberg, we're pro this. Um, we haven't released our release yet. Um, we hope to do that at WordCamp US, if not shortly thereafter. Um, but we understand the future. Um, but just because a plugin might not be ready day one, doesn't mean six months later. There's going to be a huge exodus of catch up here. I mean, I know this from the Joomla world. I've seen it multiple times when there's backwards compatibility breaks. And this isn't even the backwards compatibility break with WordPress. Um, in the next, next year, a year from now, there's going to be a bunch of dead plugins that decided not to upgrade, or those that decided to say this is the future of WordPress, and really adopt it. And it's, you know, so just because your favorite plugin day one might not have it, talk to the developers and know what their plan are. All the major uh, page builders have stated Gutenberg support is coming or is baked in. Um, but, you know, it, it'll be okay. So if your plugin doesn't support it, Hassle the developer. Maybe throw them some, some beer money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and talk to them, for sure. Yeah. That's why I like premium versions, because then you can yell at them more. <laughs> or just don't listen to these more likely. <laughs> the um, situation with the Beaver Builder is that they've taken a very conservative approach, I think, essentially waiting for the code to be released as uh, in 5.0. So they have a convert button that will take a Gutenberg layout and convert it so that you can now work on a Beaver with, be, work it with Beaver Builders Editor. And then you can have a Beaver layout and convert that to Gutenberg, but you can't go back. Uh, so if you switch one way, you can't return back to the original without losing whatever the layout changes have been. Um, one comment that uh, McCullough, Ravi McCullough, who's one of the developers for Beaver Builder made, which I think is important, is that um, using Beaver modules as if or in place of Gutenberg blocks, and then the reverse, take a Gutenberg block and use that in a Beaver layout, is what they think is around the corner uh, from their point of view. And it's, I think that it's smart for them not to spend time and money move, developing against this moving target that Gutenberg has been. But by the same token, uh, they don't have anything flashy and cool to show right now. But that's probably, that's why I say they have a relative conservative approach. I want to ask a question. Um, so 
Uh, can we just pass the mic down and have, because we've been hearing about all of these negative things and all of these, like, what happens if it breaks and all of these, like, fear things. Let's uh, maybe state a thing that we really like about Gutenberg and what we're looking forward to in the future. Is that... This way go that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from my point of view, one of the interesting things about Gutenberg is that the short-term pain of, a, of uh, uh, adopting a new user interface for editing is definitely something that you would like to avoid, but is inevitable in order for change in a platform to occur. Um, but one of the tricky parts is that the real payoff, potentially, for Gutenberg is a little down the line. So the short-term payoff is, a, is the better editing experience in terms of uh, any user, whether novice or experienced. But the longer-term payoff is just the notion of we're working with components that can be used and organized and, and uh, programmatically found and displayed in very powerful ways that other content management systems have been developing, but they are much more expensive or their enterprise class. And so this movement to a smaller unit of content that can therefore be associated with styles, metadata, and so on, is incredibly powerful, but it will take some time, at least you know, six to 18 months before we see any real world examples of sophisticated uses of the capabilities beyond just simply sort of editing, but rather, you know, more application-like pages, for example, because of the capabilities that Gutenberg offers, but also the standardization it brings that makes it better to build content, sort of dynamic uh, properties uh, in ways that would never have occurred to people with plugins or ACF and so on. So uh, I'm going to take us back to my early years of WordPress development, and uh, I had a site that needed columns, and I used I used Divi solely for columns, and that was the wrong decision based on that, based on needing columns. I shouldn't have just downloaded an entire framework for that one feature, but now we have those in Gutenberg, and I wonder how many other new users to WordPress are not going to build themselves into one page builder for the rest of their life, but maybe explore things that fit their individual needs and their, their features that they really want. So yeah, that's exciting. Well, what I'm really excited about when it comes to Gutenberg, and this is precisely what we uh, what we started the day with, um, uh, with, with my own my own uh, I'm sharing with you, is that this will really shift our mindset from just simply content development to content design. And I take design, the term design, I take that as a very very specific. Uh, I take that with a very specific meaning, almost almost a very sacred meaning. It's about building whatever you have to build out of specific needs and out of specific objectives. And therefore, what you've got in Gutenberg, which is those blocks, okay, you will actually have the tools to be able to really, uh, really create a page or a post that is definitely according to a certain, uh, according to a certain sensibility. So for example, the, my, my, my favorite example is, for if you're gonna be showing for instance, um, directions to a certain location. Okay, there's gonna be a part of us in the audience that would say, "Oh, just give them a list." Okay, okay, list. But what about people who? But what about people who would say, "I don't really resonate with the list." Maybe a map is gonna be a good idea. So that kind of sensibility to be able to discern for yourself, even before you, even before you deploy the the block. That ability for you to decide in advance, at a high level, what that content block could be with respect to what the goals that you are really targeting for, okay? Pairing that up, okay, with your user needs, etc., etc., Gutenberg has the ability to make that much more explicit in this new Gutenberg universe. Great question. So, so as a designer, mostly as a UX designer, um, I tend to focus. <laughs> I tend to focus mostly on on on, on the end of the here, guys. That was a long high five. Let's do it again. Yes. So I I I I tend to focus mostly on the end product, right? So I, I'm, 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 my whole approach is very agnostic. WordPress is my favorite uh, uh, CMS to use. Um, but I'm as EC stand up friends to use the competitors, right? Medium, uh, Squarespace, whatever fits the budget, the time, whatever. Uh, well, my point is, um, I lose some points because I have, I've been freeloading from WordPress for the longest, right? I feel like I haven't contributed as much as I 
as I should, and if you do, you, all of you will be able to review plugins, to make plugins, to do all this stuff. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so, yeah, my approach has always been, what's the best, what's the best website I can design and put out there? And um, so my, my impressions on Gutenberg have not been as, as, as intense as the rest, I guess, right? But I've tried it, I like it. I did my talk on grid, uh, uh, basically focused on, on the way the browsers are getting much, much, much stronger and nicer. And, and, and we designed boxes, right? Containers for the web, and, and I sort of love this approach of blocks and, and the, the way thing, the way Gutenberg is treating this is very flexible, very liquid medium that's the, the browser or whatever the future brings. But yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I think, right, I'm worried. I, I'm, I'm one of those that uses a million uh, short codes in a few older projects, so I'm a little nervous. Uh, I already wore them. Um, that's not me, instead. But uh, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm really looking forward. I think, I think the, this medium is moving so fast that, that we're here talking about Gutenberg right now. Five years, it might be something completely different, but, but I'm pretty sure it's all for the good. And there's been an open source community and, and, and such a huge community in the web, right? We'll be all we right. I say this cautionally because my excitement about Gutenberg is the same way I was excited for CSS frameworks when they first started back when it was bootstrapped by Twitter. Um, you know, and you had all these you know, modules that had all their own themes and widgets and their own styles and not, oh, we're gonna have a CSS framework. It's gonna tie it all together so you can focus on code and not have a theme for every different plugin and that didn't really happen. All these plugins have their own style. But I'm excited about the depth of short codes um, <laughs> because it doesn't, it's not good for the end user and in my opinion, Short codes are a way to make WordPress not open source anymore. Don't get me wrong, but from a legal perspective, GPL it is. But if users try to migrate that content, I've, I've seen it hundreds and thousands of times by people that have talked to us. Well, I got 50 short codes and two paragraphs of content. I, I'm excited about what blocks can do and helping people focus on their content first and not how to do it. And it's really, really hard for someone to visualize a short code. It, it just, it really is. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, we've done studies with dozens and dozens of hosting companies, and we found that 60% of people that install WordPress for the first time cancel within 30 days. Um, that's, you know, we did a study over a dozen hosts or whatever, um, so a grain of salt. These are first time WordPress users. Because WordPress, out of the box, it has a learning curve. Is it better than other CMSs? Yes. Is it as easy as Wix, Weekly, and Squarespace and the SaaS? No. But there's reasons why they might, users might not want that. So whatever helps bring people into the WordPress fold, I'm excited. And we don't have that silly shortcode workaround from a developer standpoint. It's just more efficient. So, um, excellent points. Yeah. And I think if, if I think back to you know the beginnings of WordPress, the slogan was for a long time, democratizing publishing. And so for me, and he still is, yeah. But, uh, I think anything that empowers content creators to be more self-sufficient and to be able to really express themselves on the page um, with no limitations, I'm excited about that. And I think Gutenberg adds so many tools to people that are intimidated by code and who don't know how to make their page look beautiful and who feel like they're falling behind. And now all of a sudden we're giving them these tools to help them bring their vision to, to the web. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's building on what the, the ethos of WordPress was for, is for a long time. Um, and you know, as a content creator, I'm also very excited about the, team, the time saving capabilities of Gutenberg. I work with a team of content creators, and um, if we can build things that we can reuse, that's just gonna help us a lot. A lot of developers say, you know, I reuse code all the time, and I wanna reuse words all the time too, if I can build them into Gutenberg like that. So I'm excited about that. So for, for me, um, the big thing that's going to happen is that it's WYSIWYG. It's better WYSIWYG than we had before. A lot better. So the, what you see in the, in the editor is going to match what goes out of the front end phenomenally more closely. If that's yes. correct. So, and I'm also pleased that we're actually probably getting better HTML rendering. Uh, the actual rendered code is better than what we've had before. So um, it, I like that you guys brought up shortcodes and also touched on 
the other builders, Wix, Squarespace. I actually got into a discussion with, sorry, what was your name again? Great Press? Miguel. Miguel. I got into a discussion with Miguel right beforehand about um, comparing Wix, Squarespace, builders against WordPress. And we actually are very fortunate with WordPress to have far more customization, far more performance, far more at, um, at our fingertips with WordPress. Um, this, but like you said, it, out of the box, there's this gap, and Gutenberg does a really great job of closing that gap, and that's just going to help <coughs> everyone, because the more adoption, the more we'll have in terms of options and features and investments. Um, the one thing for me, um, I talked about it in, in uh, my session, was reusable blocks. Uh, from an SEO perspective, from a marketing perspective, what I was talking about was I can spend less time on implementation and more time on strategy. Because when I use a reusable block, I can push out changes across the website with one click. Um, and that's great. The more time you're spending on strategy and less time trying to make code changes, uh, that's fantastic. So I think for me, uh, the same principles of good software, as I'm a developer, I'm not a content person, but the same principle of good software, which is uh, modularity, and uh, it's also applied to Gutenberg. And if you can repeat whatever block you have and uh, in an easy way, you have the same thing. Reusability, that's, that's the other one. It's the same for, good, for, for content, right? Uh, if you can apply the same thing, and Gutenberg brings that. Uh, another one is the, there is a very cool API inside Gutenberg that people are not discussing a lot, but it's inside Yoast, for example. If you try Yoast with Gutenberg, uh, there is an API called Annotations API that analyzes your content as you implement. And that's amazing. Uh, having this in the old way, in the classic area, that would be impossible. Um, for example, when you're writing your content, uh, your plugin will give you instant feedback. You don't even, you don't even have to publish anything. Uh, you're going to see if, how your sentences are, are performing and stuff like that. I'll all the SEO nice stuff that I can't understand. I will have the feedback right in front of me and visually. And that's, that's very cool. People who are used to doing something in one particular way tend to resist change. Like, everybody hates change. Uh, you know, a few years ago, Facebook changed their, their layout and um, how they delivered content. Everybody went crazy. But over time, people adapt to it. And I think that's what's going to happen. You know, we have to get over this hump. Um, you know, you might be afraid of it. Uh, you come to conferences like this. People in the community will help you out. And um, I, I promise you, on my two master's degrees in behavioral psychology, eventually, you'll be okay. Uh, you'll come through it okay. Probably less time than you thought. This is a uh, WordPress conference, so I'm going to take the contrary point of view and say that Gutenberg is being oversold, while page builders are being undersold. An example is WiseyWick, which Paul just promised will be coming. It's here. It's now. And all five of the uh, of the top end page builders do it and do it very well. Uh, likewise, in terms of templating, it's coming, but it's there now within uh, all of the five top end page builders. That means, for example, I can capture a complete page and transmit it to another site and then make the uh, uh, changes to it that I want. And I can do that in Divi, I can do that in Elementor, I can do that in Thrive Architect, I can do it in all the major top-end builders. That's coming, it's coming, but it's not here now. What's here now and what's being undersold is the capability of the uh, various page builders that are open to you in the marketplace. So take it with a grain of salt. Yes, this is a WordPress conference, but no, there's some good stuff out there right now that will help you do the design, development, and uh, strategy uh, work that you want on your websites, and they, it's very, very good. Will it survive time? We'll yeah. see. Great. Next question. Uh, yes. Uh, 
actually, both you guys put up your hand at the same time. The uh, fill in the back. So, uh, for web agencies, we're going to apply the count, uh, looking to scale their operations and their processes, and of course, keep costs as low as possible, or when possible. Um, what's the logic or the reason to use Gutenberg as opposed to other page builders, like the gentleman mentioned, uh, like Elementor, which have much more elements and the result keep costs low? The, the, the reason to use Gutenberg is it's going to be the de facto standard. Um, you, you're not got lock in. And, and if you do decide you want to move to a page builder, I'm fairly certain there will be an import process. <laughs> uh, another thing too there, uh, and I'm not, I'm not against page builders. Uh, uh, I think they're, they're really great, but one thing you do have to keep in mind is that the page builder you want to use for all of your clients going forward for, I guess, until you have to uh, uh, rebuild the content. Uh, the other thing to consider there is that uh, WordPress is open source, and, and it will always be open source, and it will always be maintained by, by a community of people who are not financially, I guess, uh, well, I guess we're financially making money, but it will be made, it will be maintained by people who are trying to do better for the entire community. When you bet on a page builder, you have to then research the page builder and know that they won't pull the rug from under you one day, too, because there is that, that uh, I, I, I'm not saying any page builders are doing this, but if they were to premium their free model, like, that's a scary thing as a content creator because then you now have to update all of your pages or buy them. And I, I feel the glare, so I do want to give you the microphone. <laughs> Just to clarify, all the major page builders are open source. Sure. Yeah. We, we need to define open source. It's GPL, General Public License. Yes. So, from a legal perspective, all the ones in the repo are GPL, some for forwarding yeah, to GPL. <laughs> so, I want to clarify my statement. No, 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 no. You're absolutely right. Uh, when I said do the research, I mean do the research to make sure that it is open source and that that they that they do not have closed source from you. Like you you want to make sure that's the case. And in the case in the current world we have right now, that is the case. Uh, I think the thing I was cautioning is if, if in the future uh, they decide to change that and. I guess they would have to go through a long process to do that anyway. Do you know what that entails? Yes. <laughs> Trust me, I, I do, which is why we don't use short codes in ours. But you know what I think is being undersold, and this is going to make me in trouble, is I think the core gets undersold in WordPress way more often. CMSs look at the plugin repo, it happens in Joomla, and Drupal, everything. They look at the app store of all these things I can add in, and then you just add stuff because it's like you're a kid in a candy store. The core does a lot more than people give it credit for. So that's what uh, I always say. Look at the core first, and then supplement if you need to. So it's a big advantage that Gutenberg is core rather than that yeah. or plugin. That's, yeah. yeah, that's, that's yeah. an extension. Mm -hmm. of there are what, probably a uh, thousand people who have worked on Gutenberg. They may have built a page builder that's got a thousand devs. So, from oh, I can <laughs> name one. Elementor, with all, uh, they've got 25 uh, 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 add-ons, uh, plugins, and uh, I bet you that they have staffs uh, uh, equivalent to what's uh, available to uh, uh, WordPress. So there's obviously a discussion around different opinions, right? There's, so from my perspective, last, last week I was actually speaking at a different conference, and it was with... Um, quite a few small businesses, and um, they asked me, the, the head, it was an incubator, and they said, you know, with our, with our small businesses, we find that builders aren't as good for SEO. Which builder would you recommend? Why? And absolutely, I, I, if you were in my session, I showed you where I switched from a builder off to, I use the Genesis framework, custom code, quality code. I mean, that, with the websites that we built there, we're, we're getting, some websites are loading in under a second, we're getting like 800 milliseconds, slowest website being 3.5 seconds. I'd like to see a, it, it's harder to get the performance out of these builders, plus code quality is also a consideration. We act, we've actually had better SEO performance using our custom code. So for us, that's a consideration. So these businesses that I was meeting with, they found the same. So my answer to them wasn't, well, Builders are awful, you need to switch. Builders are fantastic. 
it's it's the right solution at the right time for the right for the certain businesses. Right. So, so if you measure the problem and you say, okay, look, our SEO position right now is X, and we want to move up one position because that's a 150 percent increase on average. Well, let's measure the problem. Okay, it seems to be an on-page SEO factor. Is this worthwhile? Do we have other web design changes that need to come in place? Yes, okay, the timing of this would line up. Let's make the investment and line, give, line up our ducks to get that additional advantage. So measure the problem, find the right solution, and for many small businesses, that's a builder. That gets you a long way. That saves you thousands of dollars. Heck, even if it's Wix, it takes you a long way. Now, I would say so go with WordPress, but there are some businesses that can't even afford the whatever you're going to spend at the bottom end, so build it yourself. That's okay. It's the right solution at the right time. You want to Yeah. Very briefly, Jack, because we yeah. want to uh, for one more uh, question. I just want to uh, uh, take, the again, the contrary point of view and tell you what is good about uh, Gutenberg. And uh, here's when I'm going to go with Gutenberg on a, on a client site. As soon as they get multi-column rows to work properly. I just saw Anthony do it, and it's, he's pretty damn close. I use Cadence, uh, and there's two really good uh, plugins. One's called Cadence, a block plugin, and the other one is called uh, uh, Caxton. And they support multi-column rows, but in all three cases, the Gutenberg original multi-column rows, Cadence, and uh, uh, Caxton, they all crap out at some point in time. There's uh, bugs and glitches. So I encourage you to try that RC2. Uh, yeah, you're okay. going to find those bugs are a lot of them are fixed. So columns are actually much better now. That's that's exactly why I chose columns as my thing I'm excited about. I, I, I did experience that those pain points, and, and it's gotten much better. Uh, we've got time for one the last short question, please. Uh, nothing to do with page builders, so. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Uh, 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 the last few months, I've been trying to contribute back into Core. I've been doing that through the, the Gutenberg plugin on GitHub. And now that that's merging into 5.0, as someone who's new, there's almost like a disconnect. Like, should I be checking GitHub for issues? Should I be learning track? Where should yeah. I be spending my time? To so make I've got the answer to that. We we are going to continue development of Gutenberg in the in GitHub, um, and and what, what's happening is they're actually pushing those out as npm packages, and then Core is is building based on those packages. So that's how we'll do it continuing forward. Uh, so if you want to contribute today, use the plugin as your as your basis to to build. Uh, and, and use GitHub as your your main source of Gutenberg related issues. Um, track is also going to keep 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 as it is, uh, but you'll see a majority of the Gutenberg based things in GitHub. And of course, the Slack channel. Yeah, and the Slack channel is another good place to look too. So uh, I encourage you to join in on the the weekly dev chats just to hang out uh, in Slack. And if you don't have to sign up for that, are you are you on right now? If, if any of you want to join, uh, you can go to make.wordpress.org. And uh, I think you can just search for Slack, and it'll give you the first result as, uh, as how you can get an invite to the Slack channel. And you can join the weekly dev chats at uh, 2100 UTC every Wednesday. So, yeah. Plug. Well, well I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say just to really encapsulate uh, this this entire conversation is just please give Gutenberg uh, a fair shot. Okay, just please give it a fair shot. Um, uh, on a on a on a, le on a less risky location, please. <laughs> you don't want this. I mean, I would never ever put Gutenberg on my US portfolio. It's just too much risk. Okay, but, but I put it on a place where I could safely test and really see for myself what it can do for me. Give it a fair shot, and then whatever you find in your own individual testing, please let the community know. Please let all of us know so that we could collectively learn from it and and maybe we could problem solve for it. And the way you can let us know is through GitHub. You just click on the new issue button and it pre populates a, a little form you can fill out. Just a, one last sort of positive thing is I have a whole bunch of production live sites with simple blogging, simple sites, running Gutenberg plugin, no problem. Everybody's I, I don't know what the issues are. For old sites,
insights, I totally get. That's uh, a problem, who knows? Are we, we, we're battling perception right now, too. There are a lot of one-star reviews that happened in April. So, yeah. it, 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 and, and a lot of one-star reviews that were based on one-star reviews that were read in April. So it's like, it's a snowball effect there. Okay, last one, Paul. Just a comment, I just want to talk about, I want to award him for devs. If you are pulling content directly out, um, you're pulling content directly out of the post type, um, and you've got a mixed Gutenberg and non-Gutenberg site, you need to be aware that content, non-Gutenberg content, does not have the paragraph markers paragraph HTML in the code in the database. So you have to pass it through auto auto top, auto p. Gutenberg content does have paragraph markers in it. So if you pass it through auto p, uh, you'll get double paragraphs. Uh, so you need to there is a it's Gutenberg to there is a it's Gutenberg for it's Gutenberg uh, function for post type or post and you may need to dynamically test your content your post before it goes out because you could have in one post type content that is Gutenberg and is not Gutenberg depending whether that particular page has been uh, updated so there is a little catcher that you will as developers if you're doing serious stuff you might need to know Non -pre you're okay. No. So if you if you go and look in a database yeah. for pre Gutenberg, there will be no paragraph marker, just be yeah. line breaks. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a function, um, or there's a function called auto p in WordPress, and the filter, the content filter, yeah. um, uses that function. And what it does is wherever there's a a line space, like you know, it will wrap that line with a paragraph marker. So a paragraph, a, an HTML element paragraph. You get a p, a p block. You get a p block. Okay, and that's what the behavior is yep. now. But they made a design decision to for portability and okay. to reduce the amount of passing they have to do on outbound content for the front end to to now include the paragraph marker so the full HTML into the database. Yeah. So you you know I, I got caught out a few months back because my you know, I, you know I broke some layout because I was double I ended up double wrapping uh, some content because it was paragraph, you know, because I, I, I loaded some Gutenberg edited content and I passed it out for uh, the function or auto p and it wrapped it. Yeah? So you just, just a little a warning, you know, a note of warning for the devs in the community, in, in the group. So, so what you're saying is in the database now it's kind of WYSIWYG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that does it for this particular panel, the session, and we'll move, I guess, imminently to our closing remarks in this room. So if you wish to stay for that, please do. Uh, it'll be in this room. And I thank all of the people that participated in the panel because I'm sure you value their comments. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to